the bearded ghoul can put on an intimidating display for potential predators. Its red and white skin signals its intense toxicity, and its fierce spikes add to the preemptive warning. Running along its back is a rack of venomous spines that can painfully wound all that come near. Meet the giant red-headed centipede. Actually, you probably don't want to. It's one of the nastiest invertebrates in the American Southwest. And it's got legs to die for. That's terrible news for this unsuspecting cricket. In a battle for survival, the cricket doesn't stand a chance. The giant red-headed centipede is actually only seven inches long, but it has an enormous presence. It's got a very tough shell and 42 sharp and sticky legs. And most importantly, it has venom that delivers a knockout punch, as the cricket is about to discover. Oblivious, it lingers. And the centipede waits and watches, or it appears to be watching. Although the centipede has eight eye clusters on its head, with 200 little eyes each, the centipede can only detect light and dark. Another sensory organ proves to be more useful. Chemoreceptors conveniently located in the centipede's antenna detect the chemical traces emitted by its prey. All the better to smell you with, my dear. When the right moment comes, the centipede pounces. And with those appendages, resistance is futile. The centipede's legs are a straitjacket from which no insect can escape. And it uses as many legs as it needs once the cricket is secured, it's time for the coup de gras, potent venom. And it's there at the ready. The centipede's first pair of legs are actually venom-filled fangs. The poison is rich in neurotoxins. Its prey is immediately paralyzed. The centipede's powerful jaws easily break through the cricket shell. Wasting no time, it goes straight for the abdomen. Cracking it open, the centipede gets a pleasant surprise. Eggs, unborn crickets, yum. The centipede uses its palps like chopsticks to feast on the protein-rich eggs. It's an easy meal. With the weapons it possesses, most meals come easily to the giant centipede. Even bigger and stronger prey. Because of its venom, it can paralyze and consume much larger animals, such as lizards, rodents, and frogs. So the leggy creature has no problem being aggressive when it's hungry. Once the centipede bites, a combination of intense pain and paralysis immobilizes its prey. In their natural habitat, lionfish evade predators by disappearing into the background. Their stripes and feathery fins look like plants and coral. But don't get too close. Those fins will get ya. It's the mid-1980s in Florida, USA. The first sighting of a lionfish in the Atlantic takes place and raises a few eyebrows. Legend has it that Florida pet owners are to blame after dumping lionfish from their home aquariums into the Atlantic Ocean.
Three decades later, an alien invasion is well on its way to devastating massive amounts of native fish populations and coral reefs in these waters. At first glance, the crystal blue waters of the tropical Atlantic Ocean seem vibrant, healthy, and pristine. But beneath the surface, all is not well. There is a stranger here, an imposter, hiding in plain sight. The lionfish. It's an invasive species here, and it's completely out of control, slowly and systematically annihilating this delicate ecosystem. Their native habitat is the Pacific Ocean, where their striking color patterns send a strong message to predators. I'm venomous, so don't try anything funny. And they usually don't, because they've learned the hard way. Here in the Atlantic, naive predators pay dearly for their curiosity. One bite of this alien species leaves them with nothing but a mouthful of pain, poison, and sometimes death. Concealed in its beautiful fins are 18 venomous spines. If a lionfish feels threatened, out they come. Prey fish aren't much better off. Here in the Atlantic, they have not learned to recognize its feathery fins. And by the time they've seen them, it's usually too late. Lionfish blend exquisitely into coral and vibrant plant life. Then they ambush, pinning their prey to the rocks with their billowy pectoral fins. One lightning fast strike, and it's over. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. Here in their new home, each lionfish eats as much as seven times the amount it needs to survive. It's a horrifying scenario. A seemingly harmless release of aquarium fish has unleashed an army of unstoppable gluttons that feed on over 50 species of fish and breed with impunity. But where does it end? How can it be stopped? Is it even possible? If it's disturbed or chased out of its lair, the bearded ghoul can put on an intimidating display for potential predators. Its red and white skin signals its intense toxicity, and its fierce spikes add to the preemptive warning. Running along its back is a rack of venomous spines that can painfully wound all that come near. It's one of the most toxic fish in the ocean, both to predators and any unlucky humans that might step on it. If seen, this is a color warning that predators definitely shouldn't ignore. Cooled and calculating. Skilled and stealthy. Specialized killers. We know them as assassins. The insect world is full of these cold-hearted killers, where survival is the name of the game. In fact, if you're a predatory insect, you were born to be an assassin. But one bug family in particular has earned the name Assassin. This extensive family includes 7,000 species. So what sets these killers apart in the brutal insect world, where murderous mayhem fills every minute of every day? They kill with lightning speed, and they're equipped with deadly venom. When assassin bugs go for the kill, they almost never fail. Some assassin bug species actively hunt. Others lie in wait 
and ambush unsuspecting prey. Long front legs pull the victim close with freakish strength. A dagger-like proboscis penetrates the exoskeleton. A potent and highly complex venom is injected directly into the victim. Within seconds, cell membranes are destroyed and paralysis, not death, ends the struggle. Then, the venom liquefies the insides of the prey so that the assassin bug can suck up the nourishing liquid. Males and females can find their prey in the forests, scrublands, and grasslands in warmer climates on almost any continent. But they're too worldly to settle for those out-of-the-way places. If given the chance, assassin bugs will happily move into a house. And there are lots of places to hide and plenty of other insects to feed on in a human home. During the day, they keep a low profile. But in the dead of night, they emerge from their tiny catacombs and begin the hunt for a meal. Not another insect. Not a pet. A human. At its most vulnerable, asleep. Human blood straight from the source. These assassin bugs are not the first or the last insect to lay claim to human flesh. Some assassin bugs, the Konos bugs, are known for biting humans on the lips. Like their cousin, the bed bug, these species are attracted to the carbon dioxide humans exhale. A ghoulish practice and the reason these assassins are known as kissing bugs. But a venomous kiss can bring with it something far more insidious. In the Americas, it can bring shagus, a parasitic disease. The symptoms are usually mild and often undetectable. But other times, shagus can cause grave damage to major organs and can lead to death. An unnerving thought. Seems like we'd be better off without them. Strangely enough, it's not that simple. Our relationship with these notorious bugs is complicated. Just like the cold-blooded killers they're named after, these bugs can be commissioned to do our bidding. They're excellent predators, and their ferocious hunting prowess is of great benefit to farmers. They exterminate thousands of pests, protecting precious crops in the process. This is a novel approach to deception, where animals stand out rather than blend in. It's called aposematic coloration, also known as warning coloration. Using bright colors as a visual statement, their goal is to stand out like a flashing red light. It's a message to potential predators that they are poisonous, venomous, foul-tasting, or at the very least, unpalatable. And the strategy is highly effective. Some of the most common aposematic vertebrates are poison dart tree frogs. There are more than 300 species living in the lush tropical rainforests of Central and South America. These brightly colored amphibians, no bigger than the size of your middle finger, come in a range of vivid, high contrast hues. Generally speaking, the following rule applies. The brighter the color, the more toxic the frog. If predators ingest this poison, they can expect the worst. Seizures, numbness, excruciating pain, paralysis, and death. Predators that attack a brightly colored frog and don't actually die quickly learn to avoid similar looking ones. Unlike its dart frog cousin, the red-eyed tree frog isn't poisonous but it has a strategy to fool predators. 
the frog is normally camouflaged in the lush green canopy of the Central American rainforest. But it's hiding something. If approached, it will suddenly open its huge red eyes, hoping to startle birds or snakes and make them second-guess their choice of prey. If this doesn't work and the attack continues, the tree frog assaults its enemy senses with a color bomb. The frog exposes the full extent of its body, revealing blue sides and orange feet, which are otherwise hidden. The false color warning might confuse its predator just long enough to make a getaway. In general, animals deploying warning coloration use colors or patterns that emphasize rather than disrupt their outline. They want to be seen. They want to stand out. Emperor scorpions are a scary sight, creeping and crawling with pincers and stinging tails. Their black color blends with their burrows, allowing them to wait and ambush their prey. But at night, it's a different story. Under the UV light of the moon, they glow. Now, why would they do that? In the wild, they live in the humid rainforests and dry savannas of West Africa and have a most terrifying reputation. Measuring up to eight inches, the emperor scorpion is one of the largest scorpions in the world. As if its large crushing pincers weren't intimidating enough, the scorpion can also release deadly venom through a needle-sharp stinger located at the business end of its long, curly tail. Truly the stuff of nightmares. There are over 1,700 species of scorpions in the world, but only 25 are capable of killing people. The good news is that the emperor's venom is one that generally isn't fatal, though it can be extremely painful. But the emperor's scorpion certainly makes short work of anything else unlucky enough to cross its path. When it hunts termites, its favorite food, it crawls out of its burrow and uses its dark coloring as camouflage. Thanks to rows of sensory hairs that cover its pincers and tail, the emperor scorpion detects prey through vibrations in the air and ground. While blending into the background, it ambushes its prey. Then, using its massive pincers, proceeds to rip the victim's body to shreds. Not a pretty sight, but it only gets worse. Since it's unable to consume food in a solid state, the emperor's scorpion uses its stinger to inject neurotoxins and enzyme inhibitors that literally turns its victim into a liquid lunch. The ultimate termite smoothie. Scorpions are equally aggressive with their own kind. Males are territorial and at the drop of a hat will fight to the death with a dreaded rival. Females aren't much nicer. If a mother feels it's time for her offspring to leave the nest, she'll push them out. If they come back, she'll gobble them up. Now that's tough love. As if the Emperor's Scorpion wasn't creepy enough, believe it or not, it can also glow in the dark. Under ultraviolet light, it radiates a strange neon blue. Until recently, scientists had no idea why. It seemed to make no practical sense. But a few intriguing theories have come about. One theory is that scorpions could glow to help lure their prey. But research suggests that insects actually avoid fluorescence. So there would be no upside for a scorpion trying to snag a meal. Some say the glow might actually help scorpions hide more successfully from predators like birds, bats, and some mammals. As nocturnal creatures, maybe scorpions have developed a way to feel or see UV rays shining down on them from the moon and the stars. 
Maybe a scorpion's body is like a giant photon detector, a giant eye that can read the levels of UV light emanating from the moon. If that's true, then it would certainly be helpful in avoiding being exposed to enemies in full moonlight. The Emperor Scorpion comes from an ancient lineage that has survived on Earth for millions of years. With its highly developed pincers and stinger, it has become a formidable warrior. As one of the most feared creatures in the animal kingdom, it's also shrouded in deep mystery, a mystery on which future researchers might one day shed some light.